It's five on your side at six, focused on you. First tonight, a construction worker killed on the job, another hurt in South St. Louis County. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kelly Jackson. And I'm Ann Allred. This was not a work-related accident. They were hit by a car. It happened this morning near the intersection of South Broadway and Ripa Avenue. Five on your side's Robert Townsend joins us live from the scene. Robert. And the worker's boss tells me his six-member team was out here putting a new awning on that resale shop you see right there when out of the blue a male driver in a Cadillac crash into them. Take a look at this video we shot this afternoon. Witnesses say it shows skid marks from the Cadillac in the street and on the grass. Police say around 1030 this morning, the driver was northbound on South Broadway when he lost control of the Cadillac, left the road and hit the two workers. Now Marvin Ruloff says his 35 year old employee, Chris Johnson, was working at the site when he was suddenly pinned under a truck and killed. I'm told Johnson lived in House Springs and had a seven year old son. That was his only child. Witnesses told police Johnson's co worker, Carl Cease, was up on a ladder when he fell to the ground and suffered serious injuries. Cease lives in Arnold. Now, paramedics rushed him and the Cadillac driver both to a hospital. They're like brothers, all these six guys that work together every day. Um, and now they're all missing their brother and our co-worker and now a, a man and a young man is going to be missing his dad because this is oh definitely it's it's ruined my day when i call my wife she's really upset you know so it, it's just sad it doesn't have to happen now witnesses told police the cadillac driver may have been speeding and possibly drag racing with another driver before the deadly crash right now police have not confirmed that for us they are still investigating this crash at this hour we're live in south county robert townsend five on your side tonight former francis house school district bus driver robert stillwell is facing more than two dozen child sex abuse charges now st charles county police are alerting parents that he may have had contact with hundreds of students as a bus driver. Five on your side's Diamond Palmer is live from district headquarters in O'Fallon. Diamond. And Francis House School District says 66 year old Robert Stillwell hasn't worked for the district since May 2023. And we've learned from this investigation this evening that Stillwell drove bus routes for elementary, middle and high schools. Court documents show St. Charles County Police began investigating Robert Stillwell in December last year when he was accused of sexually assaulting his seven year old while babysitting her and it was reported to police. After he was arrested, police served a search warrant in January where they found hundreds of thousands of videos and photos of child sex abuse material on his computer. The documents show Stillwell lived on Springwood Drive in St. Peter's. His former neighbors disturbed by the news. As a father, I'm very shocked. I just, I can't believe it. And for, and for him living uh, so close to me, I'm a little bit freaked out a little bit. Calvashawn Ford lives doors from where Stillwell used to live. Ford has a four year old son of his own, and he says he can't imagine what parents facing this reality feel. I wouldn't know what to do with myself if somebody was to do that type of stuff to my, to my little, to my little guy. I'd be, I'd be really, really mad. Police say a piece of their investigation is working with the district to notify parents if their student rode a route that Stillwell drove. He drove buses to Bryan Middle, Barnwell Middle, Hollenbeck Middle, Cass Leo Elementary, Central Elementary, Harvest Ridge Elementary, and Francis Hell North High School, all during the school years of 2021 through 2022 and 2022 through 2023. A district spokesperson said in a statement, Stillwell has not been employed by the district since May 15, 2023, and there's no indication that the criminal charges against the former employee are related to his previous employment with the district. Ford says his young son will grow up in the district and wants better for the current student. Like I know they do background checks and stuff, but you never know. Now, Stillwell is facing 23 charges, including for statutory sodomy, child molestation, sexual misconduct, and possessing child pornography. Police are asking anyone in the district who still has questions if their child was riding on a Stillwell bus ride route to contact police. Reporting live here in St. Charles County, Diamond Palmer, 5 on your side.
Tonight, lawmakers and advocates make a plea to renew a law that would compensate radioactive waste victims in the St. Louis region. Justina Coronel attended a news conference this morning. She is in studio with their message, Justina. Kelly, Congresswoman Cori Bush hosted this news conference to say time is ticking. She was joined by advocates and victims living near contaminated areas. And they urged the U.S. House to pass the Radiation Exposure Compensation Act, also known as RECA. Extend and expand. Extend and expand. Chance for change. The clock is ticking. Time is winding down for the Radiation Exposure Compensation Act, known as RECA. If passed, RECA would be expanded and extended to include Missourians affected by radioactive waste connected to the first atomic bomb. Bring the bipartisan Senate passed RECA bill to the House floor for a vote. Congresswoman Cori Bush is pushing for the U.S. House to pass RECA since it already passed the U.S. Senate. People have died and are still dying. Bush argues against the cost of RECA being a concern. How much do we put? What is the cost for human life? In Friday's news conference, back-to-back -back speakers talked about the trauma. This was my mom. My name is Shirley Alexander. I'm here with my nephew. He's still fighting. I lost my mother to breast cancer, my aunt to breast cancer. In an 11 month period, I had my gallbladder removed, a total hysterectomy due to tumors on my ovaries. Gerard Osco has been with his wife for 42 years and lived near the contaminated Coldwater Creek for almost all of that time. And it wasn't until she was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer as a non-smoker in 2013 that um, we you know, we couldn't figure out why. She died last year. Now he continues to be her voice. She wanted other people to know that, hey, there's, there's a problem here and this problem needs to be fixed so that other people are not suffering like I am. Now Rika expires on June 7th. Bush points out, though, they'll only have 28 days in this session for the House to pass Rika. Let's take a live look downtown. Temperatures climbing into the 50s today. The sun did come out nice and bright there. Things could get frosty overnight, depending on where you live. Here is Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell with the weather first forecast. You know, the clouds are already clearing up here, especially on the Missouri side of the river. We still have some of that cloud cover left on the Illinois side of the river, but the trend is for clouds to completely go away this evening as skies clear with this chilly air in place and the winds die down. Temperatures will drop. We're still in the 50s, St. Louis to the west, upper 40s farther east of St. Louis. We do have frost likely tonight, even in the metro area. So protect those tender plants that may be out there. Maybe you have some hostas, some peonies that are up. Just give them a little cover, maybe a newspaper, maybe a little light sheet. Freeze warnings farther east into Illinois. Temperatures there may be in that 28 to 29 degree range. We'll talk about the eclipse forecast in just a bit. All right, Scott, and speaking of, eyes will be on the skies Monday with eclipse glasses on, of course. Even areas not in the path of totality are going to get a stellar show. So if you aren't going to be in the path of totality, what will you see and where's the fun place to see it? Five on your side, Tracy Henson has those answers for you and she is live tonight at the Planetarium in Forest Park. Well, the Science Center and the Planetarium is a fun place to see just about anything. And on Monday, the eclipse will be 99%, but I am told that 1% really does make a difference. The difference between 99 and a total solar eclipse is literally night and day. Maybe not what you want to hear if something is keeping you out of totality. So a partial eclipse is a cool experience. You see part of the sun's light blocked, but even here locally, that 1% of sunlight is unsafe to observe directly. So unlike those in totality, which will get to lose the glasses for a few moments, if you aren't at 100%, you'll need to keep those glasses on. So you keep your glasses on the whole time. The sky won't get fully dark. You won't see stars and planets come out and you don't get some of the amazing effects of totality like seeing the solar corona. Even so, so it is worth watching a partial eclipse. If you're looking for a fun spot close to home, the Science Center will have a watch party outside for the partial, but more importantly, they'll have a live stream of the total eclipse inside, including in the planetarium. City Museum is opening up the roof to view the partial eclipse and they'll hand out glasses before. Keep in mind there is limited capacity on the roof and you will have to buy general admission with roof access. For $10, you can get into the watch party at where else but the Moonrise Hotel. Glasses are included and you can buy themed cocktails at the rooftop garden. Eckert's is getting in on the fun too with live music and a psychic. Glasses are not optional for 
direct eclipse viewing, but there is a fun alternative. There are ways you can watch it indirectly, like say a pasta colander or strainer. You can take that outside and all the little holes in the strainer can project small little views of the eclipse on the ground. And if you need a set of these beauties, the Science Center does actually have a pretty good supply. You'll just need to get them at their gift shop over on the other side of 64. Live outside the planetarium, Tracy Hinson, five on your side. If you cannot travel to the path of totality, you don't have to miss out. We'll have live team coverage on the eclipse between 1 and 2.30. I'll be in Cape Girardeau with Scott Connell. We'll have live reports from other spots along the path of totality. And you can watch on air on the 5 Plus streaming app as well on Monday. Coming.